We are starting section four of chapter nine, which looks at types of graphs. So please go ahead and write this title down and then just look at the diagrams that I have below. So there are many, many, many ways to represent your data. So the book gives you all these different ways, but we're gonna focus on just a couple. So we're gonna focus on bar graphs, circle graphs, which I also call pie graphs, and line graphs. So we're gonna just focus on those three and how to work those three types of graphs. Then later we're actually gonna um, talk again about stem and leaf plots, which you learned earlier, maybe in sixth grade or seventh grade, in box and whisker plots. We've already done the scatter plots. So go ahead and just write down the title. Remember during the video, if you need to pause, you can pause. If you need to rewind, you can rewind. And I will tell you along the way what you need to write down. If you have questions, you can write those down on the side of your notes, or when there's a text box, you can also put that question in the text box. So we're going to begin with the different types of graphs. So go ahead and copy this down. We're going to look at three different types of graphs. So our first one we're going to look at are bar or sometimes called column graphs, especially if we use Google Spreadsheets. So bar or column graphs are used to show categories of data. For example, what type of pet do you have? So pet, there can be many different types of pets. So that's a category. So here is a graph to show you what kind of pet do you own. So here we have our different pets on the bottom. So maybe just make a quick sketch of this in your notebook. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then number of people. So out of the people that were asked, four people own a rabbit, eight people have a dog, 11 people have a cat, six people have goldfish, and five people have a hamster. So that's our first type of graph. So write this down. Again, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video. If you have questions, write those down on the side. And when you're ready to move on, you can hit play. So we're going to go to the next type of graph. So our second type of graph is a pi or a circle graph. So pi or circle graphs are also used to show categories when they are described as percentages. So that's how I remember pi percentages. For example, if we look at this pie chart, um, the percent of people who wear Nikes, and this is pretty tough to see, but 9% of the people asked wear Nikes. We don't know how many people that is. That could be 5,000. It could be five. It looks at the percentage of people that wear Nikes. So again, write this down in your notebook. You don't need to copy this graph exactly, but maybe draw a circle. And then if you divide it up, into different percentages. So if I have my circle, if I divide it into fourths, you know every one of these is 25%. You know half is 50%. So if I take half of the 25, I know this is 12.5%. And then if I take half of that, again, I have 6.25%. So that's kind of how the pies are divided up. So go ahead and copy that down. You can pause the video if you need to. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and move on. Our third type of graph is a line graph. So line graphs are used to compare two discrete sets of data. This does not always have to be change over time. So my example here that I found on the internet is Frank's math test grades. So they're comparing his grade to how many tests he's taken. So test number one, two, three, four, five, and six, so it shows how his test score has changed depending on the test. So go ahead and copy down this example. So example, choosing an appropriate graph. So I would ask you to copy this down. So pause the video, copy this down, and then when you're ready, hit play so that you can understand what we're doing. So we're gonna decide what type of graph would best be used. So the insects students most fear. So we know that there are many different types of insects, so we're gonna use a bar or column graph for that because there's many categories. The next one, we have cost of cell phones. So there are many different types of cell phones and the brand of the phone. So again, because there's many different types of phones, brands of phones, uh, we're gonna use a bar graph again. Um, students' favorite pets, 
cats, dog, but this percentages, so because we're looking at these with percentages, this could be a circle or a pie graph. And then the last one, amount of food and the size of your goldfish. We're going to make that a line graph because it's very discrete. We're looking at food and the size of a goldfish, food and size. Okay, so go ahead and write that down in your notes. If you have questions, write those down on the side of your notebook. And when you're ready to move on, we're going to move on. Write this down in your notebook, so this is on your own. Decide the type of graph you would use. So we have A, B, and C. Please copy down the question and put the answer. You should also see a text box on your right, so you're going to tell me which type of graph you would use for A, B, or C. Again, if you have questions or things that you don't understand, you can also write that in the text box. Go ahead and try these. When you're ready to move on, move on. So we're also going to look at stem and leaf plots. I'm not sure if you remember these. So what I would like you to do right now is just copy this down in your notebook, and then we're going to go over this tomorrow in class. So leave some space, but I want you to copy down stem and leaf. I want you to copy down the diagram and leave some space so that we can write some notes. We're also going to look at the box and whisker plots. So I have a worksheet that we're going to use for that, but again, while you have time right now, I want you to pause the video and I want you to copy this down into your notebook and then we're going to talk about all this. Maybe this looks familiar, but we're going to talk about what is the lower extreme, the quartile, the median. We'll go over that tomorrow during class. Copy this down so that you're ready for those notes, but leave some space for yourself to write down some notes. Okay, so as a quick review, we're figuring out ways to display data that we've collected. So there are three types of graphs that we need to know. So we need to know a pie graph, which they also call a circle graph, and when do you use those? We have a bar graph. When do you use that? And we have a line graph. When would you use those? Also from previous sections of this chapter, we looked at scatter plots. And scatter plots, whoops, um, kind of go along with the line graphs. So make sure you know when to use a pie, a bar, or a line, or a scatter plot. And we will review this tomorrow during class. Are there any questions or concerns? Do you understand when you would use the different graphs? Is there anything you want us to go over during class? Write that in the text box on the right. And I will see you tomorrow.